Thanks. Uh, well, we come off a two and two week. Um, you know, we get out of here after the midweek game um, against Tulane. I uh, was real glad Colton Frank, as a freshman, um, you know, got that walk off home run and tried to get some momentum headed into the weekend. Got there and um, you know, dropped game one. We had a chance to get that game done. We had the bases loaded one time. Um, you know, with two outs, no outs, and then just didn't get anything out of it. I think that was a difference maker in the game. Jay Schultz got removed early, um, but he has been very good, very consistent for us. But Brandon came in and threw really well for us. We just didn't get any runs throughout the period where we had some opportunities, I thought, to break the game open. Um, we, we hung tied. When you head to the bottom of the ninth or whatever at somebody else's ballpark, you always leave yourself open to you know, to that one run, and uh, they got that one run. So we went into uh, Saturday, um, AP got turned around um, early. Um, by the time we got out of the second inning, we were down seven. Uh, we're not a big team that can play in big firepower games like that. Uh, we did, Cox came in, did a real good job of shutting it down. They did add one or two more along the way that kind of were the difference maker because we made some pushes uh, throughout the mid part of the game. Um, we, I think we ended up with maybe having the tie and run at home plate in the bottom of the ninth or the top of the ninth, something, something like that. So we, we fought to try to get it back, but we just couldn't overcome the deficit that we had we, we, we put us in early. And then Sunday, Jack Burke came out and threw really well. Um, that's, that's big for us. We need him to hopefully be consistent, and his last couple outings have been very good. And then from there, Gunner came in and threw his one inning. He was scheduled to throw an inning throughout the weekend uh, and use him as a closer um, until that, that inflammation is fully out of there. He will continue to stay in the bullpen with us until he builds those pitch counts back up that he feels comfortable with to be able to go out and ultimately start. He is going to work back up to be a starter. Uh, but right now, why are we going to work? Instead of starting and having sharp starts, we're just going to put him in the back end of the pen. The next thing we have to decide, and he'll actually make that decision over <clears throat> how he feels, is what's his role as a closer in the middle of the week, leading to the weekend, as a weekend to weekend, to let that inflammation settle down, or you know, can he handle uh, you know, a closer role in a Tuesday or a Wednesday game and then be back up and close the role the weekend. And then can he close on a Friday night, maybe in a Sunday also? So those are the things, those question marks that we have that he'll probably have to answer according to how he feels. But Brandon threw really well. Uh, I was glad to see that. Uh, Cook came in through a real good inning. Velocity was up to 92. So that's a good sign uh, that freshman starting to loosen up a little bit, let it go. Um, Armstrong threw well for us, Cox threw well for us. And so hopefully, you know, we're in the second half, um, technically 1-0 in the second half. Now what we have to do is try to control the things we can control um, with, with seven potential changes to opening day to us with Bourgeois and LaHare and Wyndham and all of that. Lot took the ball off the, the, the shin. He had to sit out Saturday. Felt a little better Sunday. Castles is slowly starting to come back to be able to throw the baseball. Um, he can swing, so when we DH him, uh, we have to move Todd into the ball game. Um, so our lineup has to be moved around a little bit to keep both those backs in our lineup. So um, we've got a lot of moving parts. If you look at the first half, you know, with 28 games, uh, considering the first half, we probably put 27 different lineups out there, and so. What we're trying to do, I don't know if we can get to a consistent lineup just because of all the injuries, but the one thing we've got to do in the second half, I think, is try to control the things we can control. Uh, Sunday's game, we only walked one person. Uh, that's what we've got to do for the pitching staff is cut down the walks. Um, I think Jay Schultz has been good. I think he'll be okay. I think Perrin will be good. I think he'll be okay. If Brandon can keep coming, um, it looks like he's coming. Um, you know, he was one of the top ten junior college arms in the nation and then ran into a little labrum issue uh, his sophomore year at JC. So he's dealt with that. We've had to deal with that. Um, you got Gunner that's you know, normally eating up seven innings for you in a weekend. He's eating up one. So some people have to step up and cover these gaps. And uh, 
So uh, there are some things we can control. You can control your walks. Um, we got to get back to pitching like we did on Sunday. If we can pitch and keep the score down. Our defense has been good. We need to continue to play good defense. And then hopefully, you know, have some of the freshmen continue to grow up a little bit because when you get, you know, seven guys down and on a team, you, you start to have to use young people and people that probably should be playing maybe sparingly or growing mature-wise. Now they're in the lineup every day. And weekend, hitting weekend pitching and hitting uh, weekday pitching is sometimes two totally different things because of the, the arms that throw in the weekend compared to the arms that throw in the middle of the week. So we've got a busy week this week. We've got the, the, the makeup game coming back on us. Um, you know, so we'll have two games uh, against the same opponent. And then Arkansas State comes in this weekend. You know, Tommy uh, has probably one of his best teams he's ever had. Um, they swing the bat really well, so we will have to pitch. Um, so, uh, you know, we got a busy week. They'll rest today, try to get a little rest in, get in this morning around 1.30, um, try to get them rested tomorrow, and then back up and at it Tuesday, Wednesday, and hopefully pick up a little rest on Thursday and get ready for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So obviously you don't know for sure, but with with Gunner, because he's is Tuesday or Wednesday and Saturday or Sunday more likely, or is that too, an oversimplification? The fact that he pitched on Sunday yesterday does that mean he's out on Tuesday? Well, I, I think all of it comes back to he's day to day. So I think that's what it comes back to is you know how much the inflammation is going away. He took his medication. He, you know he's been down. But you got to understand, it's kind of like Toro in these situations. You know, um, our castle's throwing. Um, they can't throw through something like that. Um, they have to put the ball down. And so when you, when, you, when you look at it, you know, Gunner had one 15-pitch bullpen in a week to go out there and do what he did. So that's, a, that's the, the dangerous side. Then you got to take the... Um, aftermath of the adrenaline that he put on his arm in that situation and see how's his recovery now. Um, and then we don't want to push it so hard that we push him back into uh, inflammation again. Because then you're going to have to do the same thing over again. You have to put the ball down, take an anti-inflammatory, and do not throw. So that's the trouble with these type of situations. That's why Toro's taking so long is because you have to put the ball down, you have to put the bat down, and <coughs> You have to let this inflammation run its course. And so Gunner's going to be the one that's going to be, um, I, I, I think, important in this because he, I think he understands now he's gone through pitching healthy, he's gone through pitching injured. I think he kind of knows both sides of it. I think he knows himself real good as an older guy. Um, so he's the one who communicates to us as he did throughout the weekend. You know, he threw his one bullpen. And then we asked him how he felt on Friday. He said, I'd rather close on Saturday. So we, we, we put him on Saturday, but the game didn't present itself for us to use him. And so we knew he'd be ready for Sunday because he felt he could go Saturday. So now what we'll do is, is we'll, uh, you know, we'll check with him in the week and see how he feels. We surely don't want to overthrow him in the middle of the week for the weekend. So the next thing is, is can you throw an inning in the midweek game? But he's going to have to tell us that. Off the inflammation, so that's why we let them get back. Because you got, you got the game they played in all weekend, and then you've got a six, six and a half hour bus ride on the way back. They don't get into one thirty in the morning, and, and they got school at eight o'clock in the morning. So you've got to give them some time to, you know, get back out to the field. We can't touch them on Mondays because it's against NCAA rules. We can't be out there, so they have to go out on their own voluntarily if they do, and then kind of report back to us on, on how they feel. So he'll, he will, he will kind of let us know, and then we'll pitch him accordingly to how he feels he can be pitched. Did, uh, did Burke just need time, or what did he do to kind of get going? Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, those, those type of, um, you know, inflammation injuries, um, they, they do take some time. Um, and I think not only that, but because they have to put the ball down through the time that they have to let it heal, then they got to get back into arm angles and arm slots and get back to where they feel comfortable. I just think Jack feels um, healthier and he feels more comfortable with his arm slot right now so now he can repeat his delivery. And when they can start to repeat their delivery, um, they feel a lot better. 
Um, and that's what makes them good pitchers, right? I mean, even in a recruiting process, the number one thing you don't want to sign is a guy that can't repeat his delivery. Um, because that's what this is all about, is a guy to be able to throw one pitch and then repeat his delivery a hundred more times in a game. And when they get off, uh, back tightness, back soreness, uh, long bus rides, um, inflammation, uh, working through a labrum issue where they strengthen everything around the labrum, but the labrum's still injured. Um, you never know how that guy's going to feel when he gets up and gets going that day. And it affects how they repeat their deliveries. Um, so, so what you have to lean on is, you know, Gunner, how you feel? What do you think you can do? And, and uh, freshmen, they're hard to handle like that because it's probably the first time they've ever been through something like that. But you can, you can do that with Gunner. You know, he warmed up in the eighth, and I told him, be prepared, you know, if we get the lead, it's yours. And, uh, but give me the thumbs up or thumbs down because if you don't feel right, just give me thumbs down. Uh, I don't want to go back through another week of inflammation if we don't have to because we're running out of time. Um, so we look down there and he thumbs up it. So, so we brought him in. And that's the difference in having maturity at the end of a game like that, too. Um, all great closers do one thing. They focus on getting outs. Um, the guys that can't close, they can't close mentally. A lot of them have the stuff to close. But they can't close mentally because they go out there to protect the score. Those dudes never close out a game because the minute there's a runner gets on, they start to try to protect the score. Great closers do one thing and one thing only. They're out getters. They don't even know what the score is. They don't care if they one run up, two runs up, three runs up. They don't care if a guy gets on. They don't. They never try to protect the score. They out getters. And if you watch Gunner the other day, you know a guy works himself all the way around, 90 feet away, two outs, one of the best hitters in the conference at the plate, and he induces a 4-3 to three ground ball. Why? Because he didn't try to protect the score. He wasn't out there going, oh, my God, this is the best hitter in the conference. If I give up a hit right here, the game's tied. If it's tied, we could lose. See, that's how, that's how guys that can't close, they, they might have the stuff to close, but they start to protect the score. Gunner, Gunner's an out-getter. And... and that's what makes him good on the back end of the game, too, um, is that he gets outs. And that's what, that's what good veteran closers do. They just get outs. They don't, they don't ever go in there to protect the score. What, what about Wednesday? Uh, or any Toro or anybody else? That, Toro's know, getting, any of getting closer, you know. Um, but again, hasn't you know, swung a bat two and a half to three weeks and hasn't thrown a ball down to second base. He's on a throwing protocol that's, you know, 30 feet, 60 feet, 90 feet. you got to go through this whole throwing protocol. Um, so it's a, it's a time-consuming thing that not only when you get him back, it's, it's, it's you know, they've got to get back to some type of normal. So he hasn't seen velocity. I mean, he hasn't seen a breaking ball. Um, and so our, our lineup is unique right now because when, when, you, when you deal with Castles not being able to throw, but you need his bat, uh, and he can swing right now, um, it knocks a lot out as the DH, so a lot has to enter the game. If you play him at first base, you knock Hanson or McKinnon out, which we don't really want to. So that's why Sunday we sent him out to left field um, to keep McKinnon in and Hanson in the ball game and Castles. So, so you know, we, we, we've been shifting stuff every time, you know, something comes up. We, we try to shift it to, to try to fix it. Um, but, you know, we, we, we got Sunday done. So the big thing on top of this, if we, if, I think if Jay Schultz can come back and pitch the way I know he can, which I, he's been very good, uh, if Gunner can take the back end of the game for us, eventually, you know, one inning. But that's a, that's a big inning. I mean, that was a big inning Sunday. Um, maybe it goes from three outs to six outs, then maybe it goes from six outs to nine outs. That's kind of what his thought process is, maybe, is to be able to come in and maybe the seventh inning of the game and just finish it. Um, or, you know, be able to close more than maybe one inning. We're just going to see if the up and down gets him. You know, being able to get up, close, get back down, and then get back up again to close again maybe two times in a weekend. Um, I don't know, you know, he'll, he'll kind of decide that. So we're still kind of shifting some stuff, but the bottom line is, is if we can pitch like we did Sunday, get rid of the walks. Um, I was real glad to see Brandon Young do what he did because, again, 
he, he's been dealing with that labrum all fall. Um, but he looked really good. His velocity was back up to 89 to 91. But this is a guy that spent 93 to 96 in junior college. I mean, um, but I don't think we'll ever get to that back to that velocity again for right now, for sure. We, but, but what's nice is he's not 85 to 86. Uh, he's back up in some velocity, which definitely helps him. His breaking ball was good um, through, through, through his stint. So that was really good to see. So if we can pick him up and get Jack Burke doing what he's doing, you know, Jack's eating up good rock solid five innings now. That's that's huge, man. Uh, because earlier we didn't know what we had with Jack, you know, an inning here, an inning there, and now you got maybe five solid innings weekend to weekend now. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but considering the circumstances and where you're at record wise, what, what how or where does the focus change in terms of what you want to accomplish in the second half? Well, the, the, the thing we got to do is control the things that we can control and then, and then not look backwards, you know. I mean, you can't keep looking backwards. It is what it is. Um, go pull seven guys off somebody's team and see what happens to them. I mean, but you can't, you also don't want to keep hanging in on low-hanging fruit and uh, have the approval to lose because you've had injury. So that's why we're trying to let the first half go. It, it, it is what it is, and some of the stuff's not coming back through the injury, so you can't keep waiting on that. you got to just keep shifting stuff and hope people can step up and help in those areas. And then, again, we got to go back to being consistent on the mound, pitching, and keeping the score down, and not walking people. Um, and, and if we can do that, that takes some pressure off the hitters because a lot of the injuries we've had have been outside of Bradford, has been on the, the injury, I mean, on the hitter side. So... We've got to keep the score down. We kept it down game one, and we had chances to win that ball game. We get one hit here, one hit there with the bases loaded. You know, and that's the part of somebody just needs to step up and do some damage, and we have some chances to do damage. And then the pitchers, if we can continue to, you know, keep the score down and get rid of the walks, those are the things we're focusing on. We're one know in the second half. I, I, I hate spinning stuff, right? But, but at the end of the day, I know this, you're not going to get better by looking backwards, and you're not going to get better by taking uh, low-hanging fruit and blaming stuff on injuries. Uh, you got to let all that guy go and go control the things that you can control uh, to the best of your ability and fight this out. I mean, that's why they call this a grind. You know, I mean, I've, I've got 31 years of coaching. I've, I've never had this many injuries in one year. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, what you've got to try to do with it is just grind through it. And, and because if you don't, things are going to get better uh, by looking backwards. They never do, even in your personal life, man. I mean, you can't, can't keep looking backwards. you got to, you know, good Lord put our eyes in the front of our head for a reason. you got to look forward. And that's what we have to do. That's what we try to get them to do after Saturday's game. We said, hey, okay, here's where we are, you know kind of a report card. Here's what we've done good. Here's what we haven't done well. This is what I think we can we can uh, control. Some of these things are uncontrollable. You know, can't get Wyndham back. You can't get uh, Bourgeois back. You're not going to get Bradford back. Let go of the things that are not coming back. And then don't take low-hanging fruit um, and grab on to excuses. And, and, and let's fight this out to the best of our ability. Um, so that's kind of what we're focusing on trying to do. Or one more.